Good morning, everyone. Got to have your attention, please. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us for our semi-annual semi meeting. And um, for those of you who I have not had an opportunity to meet, my name is Wayne Lawrence. I'm the executive director of the Beachwood Chamber of Commerce and chairman of NOAC. And um, we're happy to have you here, actually. We've had good turnouts at our last couple years, our semi-annual meetings, and especially our Bright Star uh, award banquet, so we're, we're glad you took the time to come out. Uh, we're always think on, thankful as chambers when our members come out and, you know, keep in mind, NOAC was, was created by chambers for chambers. So you're our customer, you know, you're our members and, and we value your input. And I'm also going to, because I have my good friends from the Akron uh, Trade Council as well, we're going to include all that in terms of chambers because that's how it really originally started before it became the chamber world. So uh, you're certainly included in that as well too. We're all family here. Uh, I'd like to thank Pam Cooper for setting us up uh, at the uh, Great Wolf Lodge. It's a wonderful facility. If you have an opportunity at the end of the day, please walk around. I'm sure they love to give you a tour. It's a beautiful facility here and, and um, <clears throat> you know, throughout the course of the year, uh, a lot of things open up in this area, and Great Wolf Lodge, I believe, was the very first location yeah. opened up here. So uh, they've done they've done a nice job, and and they treat us very well. And we thank them for that. And Pam, thank you for saying. Where is Pam? I'm looking around. She's with the oh, there she is. Thank you very much. And if you could if you could join me in just giving her a warm thank you, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> and we're going to do a few. Obviously, we're going to recognize a few people and do a few thanks up front. I'd also like to uh, thank Steve Petty from New Image Media. Uh, we always see him uh, filming our meetings, and you can find them actually on our website and on YouTube, and they're really informative. I mean, if for some reason there's something you, you, you felt you heard something, you just kind of want to recapture, figure out what it was, or go back to it, you can certainly go back to the tape. So thank you, Steve, for all the generous donated time you give us in terms of taping these. We really appreciate it. You know, uh, go to first slides of the chambers. There are actually over 25 chambers who are representing us, representing um, NOAC today. And what's interesting is, you know, I, I think it started with about eight or nine chambers when we first came together. And I, I say chambers, um, creating a chamber for its purpose. I know we have some of those chambers here today. So uh, if you were one of the first eight, you know, please stand up and wave your hand. <laughs> See Chesterland Heights Regional Chamber. So we have um, and um, Broadview Heights. I'm sorry, <laughs> and Broadview Heights Solon. So we have a Warrensville Heights area chamber. So you know this was a group of these were a group of um, folks who got together and said, what can we do to make sure we provide additional benefits to our members? And collectively, that group said, you know, let's start with these these benefit programs that'll allow our members to reduce their costs, make more money, and drive their drive some economic progress in their in their areas, and the result was NOAC. And now we have 124 chambers rep representing about 30,000 businesses out there. So just over the last 15 years, it's really grown very nicely. And if you've attended our meetings, you'll see that we've certainly uh, grown and enhanced our benefit programs and things like that that we'll talk to you about later. But we come from all over Northern Ohio. So thank you. I don't know who's the furthest person who drove the furthest today. Um, Vicki usually knows right off the bat, so. <laughs> Middlefield but, is far, and then uh, who else is okay. out there? Okay, excellent, good. <laughs> now, with the price of gas going up, and I'm not sure the $25 gift card covers it anymore, but <laughs> that's uh, it used to. But uh, I'd just like to say, I'd like to take a moment to really thank um, uh, University Hospitals Comp Care for generously donating $25 gift cards. I mean, a lot of our chambers, I don't know if you get reimbursed for gas or not, a lot do not, are not unable to do that. So, you know, every little bit helps, and we thank you for your generosity in terms of those gift cards. And believe me, everyone appreciates it. <laughs> so if you can join me in properly thanking them, I appreciate it. <laughs> now I'd like to recognize some of the NOAC officers who are here today. Uh, we have Steve Petty, uh, who's with the Warrensville Heights Area Chamber of Commerce, who's our vice chairman. Uh, Tony Gallo walked in, who's with the uh, Lorraine Area County Chamber, Lorraine County Area Chamber of Commerce, and who's our vice chairman. Uh, Virginia Haynes, does she show up yet? She's our treasurer from Wellington. And then um, Ray Cantwell, who is our, our, uh, our um, treasurer from uh, Strongsville, who could not join us today. So uh, I, I could tell you that this group 
as you put together your group and your officers within your chambers and, and think about the amount of time that they volunteer, you know, I can only thank them for the hard work. I mean, we get together two and a half to three hours per month to talk about no act in the business and try to figure out ways in which we can improve this organization on behalf of the chamber. So thank you for your time. It's greatly appreciated and hopefully we'll continue moving forward. I'd also like to introduce some of the vendors who are here today in attendance, and I'm going to ask them to uh, stand up, and I'm going to ask that you hold your applause and, so we can properly recognize all, all of them. But from Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield, we have Laura Orstrander and Don Knife. Uh, from Benefits One Group, Sherm Carwell. Sherm Yeah, from Benefits One. Sherm, because Bruno's not here, right? <laughs> And um, from and that's Benefits One Group, which we're going to talk we're going to talk about later. And then FedEx Partnership, Harry Senta, who we saw, and then of course, as I recognize, we have Laura Schoenfeld and Wanda Ali Matlock from uh, University Hospitals Comp Care. So it's because of these folks that we're able to provide these terrific benefits to our members, to retain them, and to drive new membership. So I think we owe them a gratitude of thanks. Thank you very much. Now, with that said, I'm going to invite Laura up, who is going to give you a few words and tell you a little bit about University Hospital Comp Care. Okay, Laura? <laughs> you can come up. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Laura Schoenfeld. I'm from University Hospitals Comp Care. And for those of you who don't know, we are a managed care organization. So we work with employers in the state of Ohio and medically manage their workers' compensation claims. We start the process going. We make sure the treatment is appropriate and necessary for the allowed conditions on the claim. And um, we process all those bills associated with those medical injuries. Um, we're excited to be part of all this. Happy to be here. Hope you enjoy your time. And we have plenty of goodies up here. Come on up afterwards and, and um, take a bag with you and uh, a bag of swag, <laughs> <a> bag of <laughs> swag. <laughs> so enjoy thank you thank you Laura and thank you Laura <laughs> I know you were coming up as well <laughs> I um, now if you've attended our semi-annual meetings in the spring typically what we try to do is we try to incorporate some new information for you we're gonna give you that today uh, kind of update you on our programs uh, but we're also excited today because we have a guest speaker who is going to talk to you about the pitfalls of social media. So it's kind of interesting. We hear a lot about social media. It's something that, that all of us are embracing, including our members. And this gentleman is going to come up and talk to you about the pitfalls. Also, we're going to move into a portion of our meeting that's going to allow us to uh, have our actual semi-meeting where we got to go through some old business. But that said, I'd like to invite Eric Johnson, who is a partner at Walter and Haverfill, Attorneys at Law, to talk to us about pitfalls of social media. Social media has been great for attorneys' businesses, particularly in the labor and employment field. Um, I also do quite a bit of education law. And social media right now is, I would say, literally two to three times per week. We have a situation with one of our clients, whether on the private side of the organization or on the public sector, who calls and says, we have somebody who did something that they probably shouldn't have done on fill in the blank here, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, whether they're using Skype inappropriately, any of these uh, social media style, professional media, whatever you want to call it, um, sites. So I, what I did was in a very short period of time, for 20 minutes, kind of gave you the top 10 things that you need to know and that in turn those that you serve need to know, the businesses that are looking to grow, uh, what you need to know about social networking, professional networking and media. Um, what is it? Okay, Facebook, LinkedIn are the two big ones right now. Facebook on the social side, although Facebook is becoming more of a professionally accepted method of communication as well. Uh, marketing and promotion. So Groupon is huge right now. Do, how many people know Groupon? Okay, how many of your businesses that you work with use Groupon? Okay, Groupon has become, has taken off. Facebook is looking now, Facebook is going to take over the world, basically. Um, they are looking to acquire Groupon. They are right now looking to acquire Skype so that now when you go into Facebook and you want to click on to talk to a friend, you just click one button, goes to Skype. So Facebook eventually will take over all of our lives, whether you want it to or not. Um, blogging, Twitter 
is a big one right now. Uh, 140 characters, instantaneous, goes out to everybody. Can get you in a lot of trouble though as well. Uh, podcasting, video casting, things of that nature. Social networking is not just for kids and geeks anymore. Okay, this is uh, a situation where, as you'll see, Facebook now, over 120 million users between 25 and 64. This is going up by the day. It has become, Facebook has become the number one site in the world. It has taken over Google, okay, just recently in the past few months. LinkedIn, uh, over 80 million professionals, and as you'll see here, an important part, 91% of the fastest growing privately held companies incorporate social media, social networking in some way into their business plan going forward. This is where everybody gets in trouble. Postings don't go anywhere. So when you post things, you have to be very diligent about thinking in advance, as our fathers and mothers told us, think about what you're going to say before you say it because there are consequences. That applies in much more uh, really emphasis to putting things out on the web because you know, I may say in, in, I'm walking down the hallway, man, that was really dumb of so-and-so to do that. Well, I put that out on the web. Now, there's no tone to it. Uh, it can come back and bite me. It also perhaps just went to all of my friends who then can see through their friends that I put this out there. It can get you in trouble. Uh, we've had situations where businesses, uh, a salesman has put out, hey, it was great, I hit my numbers, and then put the numbers and the sales and what the quotas were out on uh, Facebook. Well, some of those things can be trade secrets. You, you might not want your competitors knowing what your sales quotas are, things of that nature, salaries of employees that are going out, hey, I just got a raise, now I'm up to. It's amazing what people put out on the internet that anybody, which by the way, Facebook um, is only about 25% American, 75% of the users on Facebook are not domestically in the US. So when you're thinking about this, this really is worldwide and it's immediate and it goes nowhere. Even if you try to take down a post, guess what? Facebook's got it. So if there's any sort of lawsuit, any sort of discrimination, any sort of uh, confidential information that someone has put out there, it's going to be there, and if it gets into a litigation situation, it can always be recovered. Should you have a company-sponsored site? It's an individual decision. I think it's a good thing to do um, if it's well-managed. You know, Facebook, LinkedIn, any of the social professional networking sites are excellent tools, but they also come with no training. So you get a car, you have to go through a driver's license program. You get a site, there's no training. So any of these things uh, where you're putting things out, putting information out there, there's no real, unless you seek it out, and there are starting to be, you know, how to do this the proper way style. But, you know, anybody who is 13 or declares themselves to be 13 <laughs> on Facebook can start a Facebook page, which how many of you know kids who are under 13 that have a Facebook page? Exactly. Um, Referrals on LinkedIn. So as you're looking at referring, uh, you know, you may say we've had we had a case that we just had to go through court on, uh, which is a very expensive process, as most of you probably know, uh, where there was a salesperson who was terminated for poor performance. Well, that salesperson came back and solicited a recommendation through LinkedIn, and it said, the the supervisor says, wonderful person, great attendance. A good salesperson, well, guess what? That person sues and says, well, how could you terminate me for performance? My supervisor wrote this. And, you know, that's exhibit A, if you will, that gets blown up on big screen in the courtroom for people to see and say, well, all right, what's going on here? Something, something else is behind this. Um, bear that in mind. Harassment charges, things of that nature, uh, there is this I'm going to use cute as an odd verb or an odd uh, adjective here, but textual harassment, if you've heard this term develop, it's kind of corny, but it's absolutely true is in, in that right now we get a lot of cases coming into our law firm where it's either email, but more so texts now, uh, Facebook postings that say, I was being harassed by an employee, even if it's outside of work. So you have to make sure that you're regulating 
and that you talk to your businesses about regulating the employees and, and what's being said on these sites. Uh, as we said here, there are certain, you, you do have certain ability to monitor posts and obviously this is going to be strengthened by, you know, typically businesses right now have an acceptable use policy that talks about what not to use email for and things of that nature. You need to make sure that you're rolling in this social media component and that your, the businesses that you work with are rolling in the social media component to say, we have the right to look at certain things. And A, you shouldn't do these things. And B, if you do, we can take discipline after we go in and see what you're doing. Okay? That's the, really, I'm jumping ahead to slide 10, but uh, the biggest thing that you should talk to your businesses that you work with is making sure you understand there are issues here and getting a policy in place that addresses it from both a business angle as well as monitoring and dealing with your employees. You do have to be very careful about um, going in and just accessing without making sure that they understand you can do these things. There were a number of businesses that asked applicants to give over their Facebook passwords so that they could go through and search. Probably not a good thing. Um, you know, and this is always one of those, I have a lot of businesses that say, well, should we be proactively going out and looking at these things? Probably not. I think you get into the, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. But when it comes to you, then you're going to have to deal with it, and that's when you're going to have to have the policy to deal with it. Friending coworkers is a big one. Uh, you know, the boss, and do you really want to see what the boss is doing, or does the boss really want to see what you're doing on the weekend, and then does it have an impact back? into the workplace. Um, again, I, talk to, I represent a number of school districts. Teachers or school employees friending kids. We deal a lot with these issues. Um, here's an important one, especially on the private side with the businesses that you work with. There is this little commission called the Federal Trade Commission that gets a little antagonistic when you are advertising in inappropriate ways. And they came out with last year in the rise of social media guidelines that state if you are going to be on social media advertising or even saying, hey, uh, Walter and Haverfield is just a great place, good attorneys, great work product, cost effective, P.S. I work there. <laughs> um, you have to disclaim that you are involved with the entity. So there is a very, and I cut out the, the visual aids here, but there's a great slide, and if you want to go online and look at it, uh, there was a, an engineer at Honda who went through this litany of Facebook pages talking about how wonderful the new products are at Honda, and then you see someone else call him out and say, aren't you a product engineer at Honda? And that's a lot of what got um, a number of companies in trouble, is that they weren't specifically saying, we work here and here's what we think of the product. Okay, So with your businesses, Again, it, it, they're focusing usually on the larger businesses with this, but they do have, um, they can come into the smaller businesses as well. Huge misconception. Free speech does not apply in the private sector, okay? Free speech only applies in the public sector. When it comes to if you need to deal with employees or others who are posting to your sites. So you may have a chamber site uh, in which Somebody posts and says, you know what, everybody at the chamber doesn't know what they're doing. Not that anybody would do this. <laughs> everybody at the chamber is misguided. They don't know what they're doing. You know what, you have much more in the way of rights to regulate that discussion than if, for example, a public school district or a city opens up their Facebook page and says, we're going to allow comments to come on. Then you have to take the good with the bad to a certain extent, unless it's hate speech, unless it's profane, and there are other ways to regulate. But if you and your private businesses that you work with uh, want to start a Facebook page, you have much more in the way of rights to regulate what gets posted or taken down from those sites. This is a huge one right now. Uh, the National Labor Relations Board, which, by the way, does not just deal with unions. It deals with all private sector uh, employers uh, after a certain threshold. You've got to have about 10 employees. Uh, this is where you're hearing a lot of the buzz right now. There was an ambulance company in Connecticut that really started it, but it's really starting to roll out. When employees are saying things on social media about the company, okay, let me give you two, two quick examples. My supervisor is a moron. 
my supervisor doesn't get what he's doing and continues to um, waste all of our collective time by following principles that he shouldn't follow. Two very different comments, okay? What the National Labor Relations Board will say is that first one, my supervisor's a moron, is not protected speech. The second one gets a lot closer to are you taking or making statements that are in the, as the phrase is called, mutual aid and protection of other employees. So even in a non-union setting, there are certain rights, and this is private sector employees, so this is kind of the caveat to no free speech. If they are making statements that are for the mutual aid and protection of others, it can't just be, get into a bunch of nuances here, it can't just be I'm looking out for me, it has to be I'm looking out for a group of employees, group two or more. So uh, you can have and you can get yourself in trouble uh, and a lot of social media policies, even in the largest companies right now, are being struck down or proactively revised because they go too far on this piece and don't allow uh, the, the employees to talk about certain things that would be along the lines of wages, work conditions, et cetera, out in the public. Okay. A lot of your businesses, uh, I, I, because it's being recorded, I won't ask, how many of you Google and uh, go on to LinkedIn as soon as you get an applicant that might come across your desk? Um, but it happens a lot. Um, percentages are very high, even of those who admit that they're doing it. I think the other ones do it and just don't say it. Um, but with, you know, this has become an informal background check process. The only problem is it can create a number of issues that you otherwise wouldn't have had. Let's say you would just see my resume and somebody else's resume, and out of pocket you say, eh, I don't like Johnson's resume. Nah, it, it, you know, don't like it. Uh, I went to Car you know, I went to Duke. You went to Carolina. You throw it away. Um, then you see the other person. You don't know at this point if I am. Um, uh, well, you probably you might know that I'm male. You don't know what race I am. You don't know what religion I am. You don't know if I've had uh, a disability, if I've had cancer, if I've had any of these things. Flip side, let's say you go out and Google my name. Facebook pops up, and you see, oh, that's interesting. Here are his causes and my causes might reflect that um, we had a situation where there was an individual who had breast cancer and that was a cause. Well, am I going to say as a business employer, eh, it's kind of close, but what if breast cancer comes back? That's going to hit my insurance premiums quite a bit harder. Eh. Or even if you don't say those things, the person who is rejected might say, well, did you go to Facebook? So let me make sure I, I know this. You knew then that you know, the individual was female, you knew she was over a certain age, you knew that she had had breast cancer. So isn't that really why you didn't hire her? I mean, looking at the resumes, they're really close. So isn't that why you really decided not to hire that person? Well, now you have knowledge of those things where before you could say it had nothing to do with it. I didn't even know that. Not knowing it was always a very good defense when you're faced with these kind of claims. But now, because you've seen it, you don't have the ability to say I didn't know it which means it likely goes further along in the litigation process. So it, you know, there are some good things that can come out of doing the background searches. I'm going to put it in quotes. But you need to do it the right way. And if you're going to do it, you should probably do it for all employees and be consistent about it. And a lot of companies are even developing policies on that issue as well. Employee off-duty conduct. There are some states that say whatever employees do on their own time, New York, Kentucky are two of them, uh, you cannot take any action based on uh, if it, so long as it's legal. So in Kentucky, um, you know, whether it's smoking, whether it's uh, whatever it may be, smoking's a big one in Kentucky. Um, you can't do anything that would be in the employment setting disciplinary against them for doing something legal off their off duty. In Ohio, that is not the case. So if there is an impact to your business, uh, especially on the private side, public side's a little bit different, but especially on the private side, if there's an impact to your business because of what somebody's doing off duty, they then hurt your reputation, you have certain rights to then discipline that person. Here's a key one that a lot of people don't think about, LinkedIn, Facebook, and especially in the private sector, uh, making sure that your confidential information is protected. 
Um, along the same lines as that salesman that I talked about, there was a regional manager who did a, a very similar thing in retail and said, here are you know, really the monthly goals that we have, and we met them all. And the you know, person's obviously very happy that they met them all. Uh, corporate was not too pleased that that went out because now competitors see, oh, well, now I see where they're tracking in that particular market because obviously it identifies the person down to what city they're in. This was a national chain. What city they're in, what market they're in, what mall they're in, and now you can see exactly what that, and that's what typically leads to, uh-oh, we need a policy because this was early on in the life cycle of social media and this company didn't have a policy to say, eh, you probably shouldn't do these things. And one of the tenets of employee discipline is you should probably put them on notice not to do things. Now, there are some things, there are some things that people should just know not to do, punching supervisors, things of that nature. Although even that now is in handbooks, you know, don't hit your supervisor. Um, controlling the flow of pictures, information. We had another situation where uh, there was a, uh, plant manager was very proud of the reconfiguration of uh, the production area. Takes pictures, puts them on Facebook. Well, you might not want the reconfiguration of your, your plant, that area, going out worldwide uh, because frankly that was everything that they had done to protect it as a trade secret, the layout, the production mechanism, and legally up until that point if anybody tried to get that we would have a great defense you just blew everything out of the water by putting it out online. You sacrificed any confidential information claim that you had. And then you get into you know, medical records, you get into all of these privacy issues with um, individuals and coworkers putting out other you know, pictures of other coworkers. You know, the obvious one is guy takes a picture of the other guy at the urinal, which yes, we've dealt with that. We have very mature employees still to this day. <laughs> Um, and they come out of very sophisticated clients too. This isn't just you know uh, backroom production kind of stuff. This is it's amazing what still to this day happens. Um, you have that, but then you also have the more sensitive information. Uh, and sometimes employees don't want you to put out. We had a claim uh, from an employee who was upset that someone put him on the prayer list at church because they didn't want people to know that so-and-so was fighting a certain ailment. <laughs> Similar, put it out on Facebook to say, please pray for so-and-so. Well, that can come back to bite you too. It's, it's amazing now putting these things out. And again, back to the earlier slides, they don't go anywhere. They hit everybody instantaneously. It's amazing how powerful this can be, and it can be great for your business, but at the same time, you've got to mitigate the risk because it could be equally detrimental to your business. And then just to wrap it up, Absolutely, your businesses should be looking at policies to deal with this. Your standard acceptable use policies and the policies that talk about don't use email for bad things, uh, those are likely outdated. You need to go a little farther and address the fact that you're doing this off duty, the fact that you might be remote, the fact that you have certain rights, and you have to make clear not to do those certain things like disclose information about the company, uh, send out pictures of coworkers, employ you know, the employees, uh, say certain things about management while still protecting and not falling into an issue with the uh, NLRB, uh, NLRB regulations. So that's where we are. Do you have time for questions? I do? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Questions. I felt like the little guy from, if you remember Micro Machines, the guy that used to talk about the cars and just go, okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Anybody? Ten back up? Ten back up? Sure. Yes. My question was when you were talking about the plant and they put a picture up that showed and gave like the mm -hmm. trade secret. Aren't many of the Facebook sites or LinkedIn like, sites? So the only people who could access it are people that you allow. And does that make a difference? It can make a minor difference, but you know, there's also the you put it out there. You know that one of the risks is that it gets hacked. So by you putting it out there. Uh, there is a little bit of a mitigation of, well, we put it out there and it was protected. Okay, well, if it's protected, is it protected from, uh, let's say you have an employee whose kid is a friend of that employee. Well, can the kid see it? So you get into a lot of issues that you 
probably don't want to run the risk of then losing a trade secret that is, you know, 98% of a number of companies' entire business is what they have intellectual property was. So. And then, kind of going on that, if yeah. you um, partake in Facebook in a personal level, do you suggest that it's always protected and closed? That you never have an open site? Uh, uh, yes. I mean, I, I will tell you that, um, unfortunately, even legal things. So things that you're doing off, off duty can come back to bite you. And uh, I'll tell you, a lot of it happens in the public sector with teachers. So you, we've had to deal with situations where you've got pictures from college that you might not have even posted. That's the thing about Facebook is you don't post these pictures. Somebody else posts these pictures. But you're sitting there, um, let's just say you're at Halloween OU wearing your, uh, wearing your costume, and you're sitting there with, uh, marijuana in your hand. Well, it, that's going to be a problem for a lot of parents who now you're put in front of, particularly as a younger teacher, and they're saying, wait a minute, I don't know if this is such the, and this could be five, ten years ago, I don't know if this is the role model that we want. Um, we've had to deal with a lot of those situations where you have these pictures that, again, weren't even posted by you that can come back to bite you. And I think on a personal level, what you need to do, and we were having this discussion a little earlier, even with your professional sites, you need to make sure that you're staying up on them. One of the things that um, we see a lot is great to start it up, but there's a lot of work that goes up to maintaining it the right way. And you can set, up the, set it up all you want, but then if you don't do anything with it, all it becomes is perhaps just uh, a lot of naysayers posting and continuing to post back and forth without you really controlling or your businesses that you work with really controlling the message that you want it to be. I mean, it really has to factor into your PR strategy, your communication strategy with where you want to go, and then making sure that you're staying on top of your own personal to say, whoa, 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 cousin Freddie probably shouldn't have posted that picture of me, you know, guns a-blazing. Um, <laughs> so, so, so uh, our chamber has a Facebook um, mm -hmm. page, and um, you know a lot of times after our events, we take you know we take a lot of yeah. pictures. And is it should I not be posting pictures from my events? Yeah, I mean, here's the lawyer. The here's the lawyer answer. Okay. The lawyer answer is you should probably tell people in advance that they might be photographed and put out in publication. Uh, that's the lawyer answer. Does this happen all the time? And usually it's resolved by, eh, I didn't really want it, that picture up there. I'll tell you, we had this situation because there was a, uh, I can't help but chuckle a little bit. There was uh, an office party. By the way, office parties are bad. No, no. <laughs> but they're good for me. Uh, they're good for our business. Sometimes not so good for yours. But, you know, holiday party, a little bit of alcohol is being served, and you have manager who is you know fake kissing I don't even think it happened with subordinate who then subordinates performance and actually then does something really dumb has to be terminated and that's exhibit a of here here you go I was harassed at work and this person I couldn't I couldn't focus on my work because I was being harassed for so long this goes back to office party of you know, it's just out there and it's a whole new world for us to deal with as lawyers because you can get all of these things in your case. Um, there was a, a huge class action in Cleveland on welding rods that Lincoln Electric was involved in and the person was claiming they were severely disabled because of the product. Well, a little bit of homework on Facebook shows Mr. So-and-so as a champion power boater <laughs> holding up big trophy, bigger than me, which is at least 5'6". <laughs> Although I did wear two pairs of socks today. <laughs> Five, six, saying, woohoo, yeah. case dismissed. I mean, that, that's how powerful this has become. And again, it's a great tool, and I don't want to discourage your, yeah. either the chambers or your businesses from using it. You just have to use it really wisely and stay on top of it. So maybe at events where we are taking pictures from the podium, just let folks yeah. know, hey, if you don't want pictures of you published, just let us know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Okay, thank you very much. We're going to continue with our, um, with our meeting today. Um, we do have a short business uh, meeting that we have to cover for just our semi-annual business that we have. 
Uh, every chamber rep received a green folder with the minutes and also the uh, financial statements. They're also posted on the website too. <laughs> they will be posted on the website. <laughs> uh, take a moment to, to look at the minutes. For those of you who were there, uh, can make sure that we didn't miss anything. There's no additions, deletions. And after you've had a chance to review it, if I can, I'd like to accept a motion to approve the minutes as presented to you. Do we have a second? Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Is there anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. We'll submit the minutes as accepted there. Uh, you also have the treasurer's, treasurer's report for 2010 year in. If there are no questions, and please take a moment, we're not going to push you through this. If there's no questions, we will submit the report and file for audit. That's our process. Do I have any questions? If you do, please, uh, you know, feel free to, Vicki gets questions from me all the time and, and officers, so <laughs> it is an open book. So if you ever have any questions, it's, uh, it's our money. So just like we uh, manage as good stewards of our chamber's funds too. So, okay, we'll submit those for audit. Okay, now I'd like to um, invite our executive director, the wonderful Vicki Hawk, to come up here and give you some updates in terms of our vendor program, website, and some things we're doing. Vicki, please join us up here. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. Hold on the applause. Oh. <laughs> I know why you're all here today because your invitation to the wedding got lost in the mail like mine did. Right? <laughs> no, we really do appreciate you coming. You actually probably chose to come here instead of the wedding, so we, we are glad for that. Uh, again, I, I'm going to keep my, my, um, my message brief, and I am going to read a lot of this because I tend to ramble a lot. You know, you guys know me. I talk a lot, so I want to make sure I, I hit the spots that I want to hit. Um, as always, information is all on our website, noac.org, and which, by the way, we had to remind you that it is a new website right now. So uh, there's lots of great new features. Uh, we're adding more as we go along. I didn't make a big announcement. We, we did talk about it last fall, but please go there. Visit often because uh, Chambers asked me all the time for an ad for Anthem or some marketing information or an article they want to put in their newsletter. It's all there. So please go visit that. And the other... Um, the real big aspect of the uh, website that I'd really like to build up on and you need to build up on is your testimonials. If you're not getting testimonials, I hear great stories all the time from people. Don't always write them down. I don't always remember to go back and get them. But try to do that. Try to get a testimonial. We had a great testimonial. Patty, Brian, do you want to tell everybody what happened the other day with uh, one of your guys? I was at... Um, Stand up so we can hear okay. you. I was at a committee meeting, and this was for my chairman of the board, and he is an attorney with Browse McDowell, and their chamber members have been for several years, and they were currently enrolled in Anthem, and I don't know how many meetings Terry had sat through and kind of heard about the discount for chamber members from Anthem, and he finally went into uh, their HR department and said, told them about the program, and it ended up saving them ten thousand okay. dollars. And uh, you know, again, they they didn't have to do really anything other than prove their chamber membership. They worked closely with Vicky helped out, and and Anthem was great about kind of going back and and uh, looking at how many employees they had and, and what what they qualified for. And so, I uh, you know got out of the meeting. I didn't think about it at the time, and then I. I I called Noak and I said, I just heard a great story and I think this would be a great testimonial. So then Vicki called right back and said, can you talk to Terry? Can we get it? Can we get a great quote? Because this is exactly what we are telling people. This is a reason to join the chamber. But not only that, that loyalty now that we have with this firm because of the fact that, you know, they have far exceeded their annual dues, obviously, by their discount with their anthem. Um, with the Anthem program. So um, Terry was gracious enough, um, who's a partner there, to write a testimonial and email it to them yeah. so that we can use it to kind of get those stories out there. 
I mean, as an attorney and as the president of their chamber, to have that kind of testimony, I thought was really wonderful. And that was for a large uh, group, and the fact that Anthem was able to do this was is really significant. When I asked Terry about it, actually, he said that he had been with another company originally. He had just come to this law firm, like within the last two years. So he like he was uh, the golden boy for a few minutes at least with uh, a ten thousand dollar savings so this is the kind of stuff that you need to tell your your members about i know wayne had a great testimony on we won't go into all of that but collect them build on them it's good for your chamber it's obviously good for the products that you're promoting um the anthem one tends to be the biggest one but we have some wonderful testimonies on workers comp i'm waiting to see all the great ones we're going to get on fedex and i know i've had several on many of the other benefits so i don't do nearly enough to put them on the website i need your help please send them to me like Patty did and let's build that up because people need to hear what has happened through their chamber membership. So let me go on to uh, a few of our benefits just to, to review uh, a few things. The enrollment time for a workers' comp group rating program with Benefits One Group uh, and actually all of the groups across the state ended in February and it'll again begin in the summer, early fall, Sherm, is that about the right time? Uh, for next year's program. So look forward to that information. And you may be with another workers' comp program. That's that's fine. Uh, some chambers promote two. Some only do one if, they're, if they have an exclusive arrangement. We're okay with it either way. This is for you to take advantage of. Uh, and Sherman would be glad to help. They're a smaller firm, but they're very aggressive, especially when they work with uh, penalty rated people. And we are actually working on a new product, um, which is going to be unemployment consultation. Um, they've identified a huge uh, area of opportunity to help your businesses who are dealing with inaccurate filings or, or, or claims uh, that are maybe not exactly um, correct uh, because people are losing their jobs, things are changing, and there's a lot of compliance issues. So by being able to consult on that, they're able to help people. So that's, that's a product that we're going to be dealing with um, uh, down the road. We're working on it right now. Uh, and again, it's a way for chambers to earn revenue. I just want to refer to the ones right now that are revenue drivers for the chambers. So again, thank you, Sherm, for being here. And feel free to call or ask him this question. They've got a great team at Benefits One to help you with this. Uh, the Chamber Office Program with Independence Business Supply is a well-kept secret. So <laughs> we need to start uh, talking about it because the chambers and the businesses that are using it are saving money. The chambers are making money on it. We've, we've issued at least three uh, rounds of checks now for chambers. Um, Pam did a, Pam Cooper from Vermilion Chamber, she went out and knocked on doors and got her city and her schools and all the major companies in town to do it. It's still a growing product and you still have to remind people that it's there, but it's a great savings opportunity and residual for a chamber. And I know uh, Wayne does the same thing. He, he gets people on board with that all the time. Uh, and again, as I mentioned before, the FedEx program, you cannot, Harry, tell, tell everybody, you cannot get a better program discount in the country except for this one unless you're a big client of FedEx, right? You've told me that. Yes. Uh, FedEx typically will only work with an association or group that has membership numbers larger than 1,000. Uh, so through uh, your power together, all the chambers under NOAC, uh, we were able to form this partnership and get the program set up with FedEx. So tell your people, I hear that all the time when I'm making presentations at Chambers. Oh, I use FedEx. I talked to a dentist the other day. I didn't know that dentists use FedEx almost every single day. She's really excited about looking into the program. So again, great testimonial coming, I, I know. So use these things to your advantage. That's why we work so hard to make them happen. And along with that, we're going to be talking later. Um, uh, Wayne's going to talk a little bit more about our new approved vendor program. And that's going to be our goal, number one goal. In, besides Besides getting great benefits to use, it's going to be in getting and building the residuals for the chambers. So um, that has always been NOAC's goal from day one was to attract, keep members with your chamber. It's been a big one with Anthem, obviously, because we all know how successful that's been. But uh, all these programs have been built with the idea of encouraging members to stay with your chamber, to see the value, extra value with their chamber membership, and to bring dollars to your pocket to, so that you can keep your programs going and your membership fees low. And, staff going and rent and you know all those things so um, look for these things to take advantage of and last but not least and I switched my order around by the way um, because I wanted to end with Anthem the uh, 
we, we've just been um, completing the Anthem Chamber Marketing for 2011. In fact, I meant to send an email out yesterday and I had computer issues, so I have to remind everybody that this was the weekend to get it in. Now, we're, we're not gonna hold the deadline so that, you know, I'm not gonna slap anybody's hands. The goal was to get this in. We do have to get it in, though, for um, the programs and events that uh, are coming up, because if you want Anthem to be at one of your events, it's tough, we have to get their schedule, and, and they, they're very busy people, too. But we want to make sure that you're having this, these opportunities. And we're, to, we're actually allocating. The officers sat down and looked at the budget and took a deep breath. And they said, let's allocate more money to give back to the chamber, since our goal is to get more money back to the chamber. So we've actually increased the kitty to $75,000 this year. Potentially, they could go back to the chambers who ask and get to this money through their efforts in, in marketing. So they have to submit the plan. The plan is due this weekend. But um, $75,000 to help you do what you should do to promote your chamber and your membership anyway. So all along, Anthem was a, a big driver for you to bring businesses to your chamber. But the more you do to promote and keep Anthem in front of people, um, and yeah, I have to remind people all the time, Anthem doesn't need us. Now, we love them, and we love this relationship. But it was developed because it was a great partnership for you and for them. They don't need us, though. They do give this discount. They love us, too. Right, Laura and Don? <laughs> and, and that's why they want to keep this thing going. But really, they're a big company. So you got to do your part to make sure people know that this product is available through their chamber membership. So um, I can't speak enough of it. And with that in mind, by the way, um, we have a new incentive program. And now I'd like to have Laura come up because we have details in your program, in your folder rather, on this newest program, which is going to be the Anthem Contest. Yes, right there, Anthem, <laughs> Anthem Contest. Um, Laura doesn't want to speak too much about it, but she really brought this program to us originally to Bill Ryan, who, by the way, couldn't be here today. And I think she, should, uh, she deserves credit for uh, launching it with NOAC. And I wanted her to just to say a few words about how it worked with another association, and then we'll talk about the rules. Thank you, Vicki. Um, yes, if you see it, it's the um, race derby looking piece. I'm not sure if anyone's Kentucky Derby fans, but um, we did a similar program, a contest for SACA, the Southern Ohio Chambers of Commerce. And theirs was a little bit different. Theirs was kind of based on getting some marketing out to the, the member. So they turned in lists, then used their you know, you know, SACA brochure, which was very similar to the NOAC brochure, and sent it out, and then had a set period. And the most Anthem members they could get in three months for that chamber was the winner. Their prizes were not as steep as ours. So so Bill and Vicki and the Wayne, they were all kind of looking for some ideas. And if it was up to me, I would say we should do a contest for the most creative marketing piece, because I'm a marketing person. So when the plans come in every year, I'd say, oh, that's a pretty cool idea. I like that. But um, you know that doesn't really drive members into your chamber, nor does it drive members into Anthem. So we came up with this idea that you know um, people really join the chamber for networking, and that I know you guys have that all under control. You have lots of great events that network, and then the number two reason they join is for um, the benefits. So how could we encourage each of you to go out there and get more people on Anthem, and then in turn you know repay you for that? So that's kind of what the theme of the um, Derby is on, that you're gonna grow your membership by getting more people into Anthem. Anthem will be excited because we get more membership, and Vicki and Wayne and NOAC will be excited because they also are getting more membership into NOAC through your chamber. So that's kind of the basis of it. It's gonna last for the rest of the year, right? So starting now to the rest of the year, um, again, you, you, it's pretty easy for you because you'll also have the opportunity for prospective members, so attract some people into your chamber, or maybe there's some people in your chamber who are not Anthem members, so you could tap into them and try to get them to be a member and then in turn join. Um, Don wanted me to remind everybody that if you are in a chamber and you take Anthem, you get a 3% discount off street rates up to 50, plus a 1% um, tax credit. So it's a 4% discount for groups 50 and below. Now, if you have a group 51 to 500, they still qualify for the 1%, which could be a lot of savings. Like Patty was saying, if your company is 100 and they get 1% off their premium, that's a big savings to, to them. So um, 
you know, a lot of people aren't sure about that 1%, so I just wanted to remind everybody about that. And um, like it says, the race is on, so we're excited to see the results and, you know, which chambers. Now, I think the marketing part is important, so the more marketing you do and the more creative you can be, you'll probably attract some new members and get your members to join, so I'll be keeping a close eye on that. Sure. I, yes, yeah, thank you. Please, thank her. <laughs> what, what you guys don't know is this is a result of a huge amount of paperwork that we gave Laura. We said, can you turn this into one flyer? We think she's amazing just because she was able to do that. Um, but seriously, mm -hmm. the, the rules are here. Um, it is a little bit of a tweak from previous uh, of things that we've done or even the other organization did. But we, we looked at it from all angles. The, the challenge here is that we have chambers that are really, really small, maybe just volunteer chambers. And then we have the really larger chambers, the county chambers, regional chambers. We have chambers that have like 10 or more brokers that are real active and you know sell a lot of Anthem. And then we have chambers that may not have so much. So it's, it was a challenge. The officers all represented different size chambers and you know they threw their things into this like what if this what if that so we're doing the best we can to mitigate all of those things so that a small chamber can compete with a large chamber it's going to be done by percentage you have to trust us here because it's there's percentages and calculations that we're working on and then there'll be probably some ties I can just see it happening now where we have a couple of chambers that fit into one or more of these categories and we'll just have to split the money but that's okay because the more money that gets out there the better so um, the goal here is the contest is actually started. It's already begun, April 1st. Um, we, and we had to do that because it, it builds this whole month. As we go forward and we as we go through the end of the year, which will be December 31st, we won't know who actually wins the contest until the spring of next year. But this gives you plenty of time to, to build on this, to, to have conversations with your brokers, bring them in, buy them lunch, get them breakfast, um, have them uh, be working with you to build on this. Uh, between both your current members and your prospective members, Anthem will be keeping a list so we'll know it, it will not um, be based on your existing anthem contracts we had a cut the line somewhere this is strictly going to be on new contracts so um, the chambers participate first of all by submitting their list which we will then scrub clean and use as kind of a lead list and then you get paid hundred dollars just for submitting your list so even if you get nothing else out of this, just for submitting your list, you get 100 bucks. We thought that was a, a great entryway. And then the second level on this is if you get five applications, again, we know if those applications are coming into the Anthem office, they all go through a, you know, a central place, then you get an, another $100. So just for participating and having five new contracts, you can get $200 as easy as that. And then you'd be surprised. Um, how some of these other things were going to fall into place. So uh, it, again, all the information is here, and plus we'll be sending more out to you. And I, again, refer you back to the website. And I have to ask Laura is going to have to be giving us more ads and more information, because I know Chambers uh, are going to want to put that stuff into your newsletter and be as active as you can with it. Yes, Rose. Yeah. New to Anthem. Well, they could be both, but new to okay. Anthem is what we're talking about. The new part you're talking about is a new Anthem. Right. Yeah, this is not necessarily, they could be a new member. Like I said, they could be an existing member or a, a prospective new member. But um, they, this is about Anthem contracts. And if they were previously Anthem and then they aren't anymore and they come back, is there any, like, time? Because I know some of our people may have been at one time and then left, and now could be coming back. Yeah, I don't think we care, right, Laura? I mean, we, we can't go back to... As long as they're not just with Anthem right now, you know. They could have been with Anthem years ago because people switch all the time, so, yeah. They, they have to submit a con, or, uh, new applications, so it's all based on new applications, so. Yes? Is it um, five applications or does the application have to be approved? No. Contract? Right, just five applications is what we, uh, and because once they're approved, they're sales. Yeah. Laura, Don, come on, answer me. Well, I think we were talking about applications because they have to be valid applications. Somebody, because you're not going to go through the trouble of a broker is not going to go through the trouble of taking an application, submitting it to Anthem unless it's a viable one. They don't have to buy; they just have to be an application. And it's five groups. Five groups. Yes, I'm sorry. Five five separate businesses, not five contracts with one business. It's five separate groups. Yes, that I know. <laughs> um, is there anything else I wanted to point out in there? Everything is really here. I don't want to take too much of your time now. Uh, 
again, it's just something um, that we should help you, and please take advantage of it. Not every chamber is going to participate, and that makes the odds better for you if you do participate. So I, I just urge you to do that. And Wayne, did you want to talk about it? Yeah, forgive me. <clears throat> Thanks. We are, um, two years ago, we gave out $24,000 to chambers. Last year, we gave out $50,000 to chambers. This year, we're going to give $75,000 or more to chambers. You know, we only give it out. Um, we give out that money for, you know, several reasons, obviously. We know as, you know, as I put my chamber hat on, uh, we all have very limited budgets in a very trying time, and we've got to operate. And our businesses are struggling. Some are starting to get their, their legs under them again, but they're struggling. And they can't do as much for us as they had in the past. So we understand that. The other part is you've earned it. <laughs> the chambers and its members and, uh, and, and your participation in these programs help drive this fund so we can give it back to you so we can drive more uh, funds. We can give it back to you and drive more funds. You got to take advantage of it. I'm telling you, you have to take advantage of it. Uh, I, I, I go around and we talk to various chambers, and I know we're all very busy people. We are. Some of us have support staff. Some of us are volunteers, that, you know, one person. Some of us, boy, they can't wait to get our chamber office because they got got 100 other things to do that particular day, and we understand that. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to put together programs that are very easy for you to execute and take advantage of what's out there because, you know, we have strong relationships or partners with our partners, and, um, you know, it, 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 but, but we, have to, we have to work, we have to go, and we have to support the programs. And if we do support the programs collectively, we all win. Then we have the $75,000, $100,000, $125,000 down the road to have towards these programs. And here's an example of what we've been doing, you know, to just creatively figure out how can we go out there and help our chambers. So I'd encourage all of you to participate. When we think about Anthem, and we think about these benefit programs, any one of them, but certainly Anthem is a driver. I think last year, Laura, we, we had on our, um, you know, when we did our questionnaire to everyone, the members, 97% of our membership um, felt that that benefit was critically important to them, very important to them, et cetera. So let's take advantage of it. It can help us grow our memberships. Um, yes? Yeah, you're going to get, that's a very good question. There's going to be a lot of um, new information, um, creative marketing stuff, and tools that will help you grow this program. The reason I was mentioning that this program is easy is because by, soliting, by submitting your list, you're saying we're committed to even participating in this contest, and we're going to send you $100. <laughs> and then if you get the five new application, group applications, that means that, well, we're really committed to it, so we're going to send you another $100. And then you enter into this contest to win, and you saw the earnings. Uh, if you add them up, it's a lot of money. But even if you don't win there, where you're going to win is for every new contract you get, you're going to continue building that fund that we pay out for you every year, in a sense. So you guys are now submitting. We are all submitting our marketing plans for the year, and that money is based on your contracts and increases, net, a lot of different formulas. And we try to make that so that every single type of chamber can benefit. Small chambers that you know, are looking to increase double the amount of contracts they have, and even larger chambers like us, where we may have a significant amount of Anthem business, but you know, um, you know, even a small percentage would help us increase. So this is what it's designed for. So please take advantage of that and all the programs we have out there, because uh, I know, uh, thank you, Patty, for that testimonial, because I, I tell you there's a lot more out there with every single one of these programs. Uh, I know just even with the Independent Business Supply Program, we use them as a chamber, and we know we've tracked a 22% savings versus the previous year when we weren't using them. So we use them. Now, I'm just going to, and I know this isn't right for every chamber, but I know with our chamber, uh, we're very committed to the NOAC programs to the point where, how many of you on a constant basis get that phone call from that business who says, I want to offer member-to-member -member benefits, or I want you to approve me and endorse me. How many times do we hear that word endorse out to our members? A lot of you get that. I know we get it all the time. And then the next day, you get a call from their competitor. <laughs> Can you endorse me? And so you have, maybe, you have maybe five or six companies within one industry looking for the chamber to endorse them as the best or as, as a member-to-member -member benefit, et cetera. 
What we've chosen to do is say, hey, listen, we understand, we, we value your membership, et cetera, and that member-to-member -member benefit programs are, are good. When we talk about endorsement, when we're talking about taking our, telling our members you ought to get some value out of this program, we've turned strictly to the NOAC programs. And we've said that NOAC is going through a thorough due, and I'm going to lead into our next part, which is our vendors. NOAC is going through the time and effort to go through a thorough endorsement program to bring in partners. And once they do that, then they feel that this offers, that allows us to offer a great savings opportunity to our member. So what we've created now is, as we talked about last year, one of the things we mentioned, where we were going to have kind of three categories within NOAC. Some may remember that. We have exclusive partnership, of course, with Anthem. We have our preferred vendors, which are those who are currently under contract, and you heard about them today, Benefits One Group, Independent Business Supply, some other ones. And then approved vendor program. And a lot of people said, well, what's that? And we tried to explain it. Well, now we have it. The approved vendor program is an opportunity for your members, any one of your members, to go through the NOAC process to become an approved vendor in a very formal way. And we spent a lot of time going over guidelines. Now we're, and, and we're over guidelines and creating and make sure it's, it's the right vendor, the right programs for you, et cetera. But that program is open to any one of your members. So now when someone comes to you and says, and I'm going to give you a real example of what happened to us, because I talk to probably three, four companies a week about this, or coming to us one endorsement. When they come and say, well, I'd like to get endorsed, I said, fine. Become an approved vendor through NOAC, and we'll maybe bring you through our chamber, all right? They go to the approved vendor program and they look at some of the requirements. And it's not real expensive and it's not a lot of work, but it does take time. There's a due diligence part of it, including DMB reports and things like that that we pull. Now, think of, let me, let me tell you, out of the 10 that I suggested they do that, one or two actually follow through on the process. So you start to think, well, wait a minute. You're, you're going to provide this service, you want me to endorse you as a member, but I'm asking you to go through a couple, you know, jump through a couple hoops to get that endorsement and prove to us that you're going to provide the service level, and it stops right there. We can't risk as chambers getting businesses out there that aren't going to service our members, not through our endorsement, and that's what NOAC approved vendor program is for, to allow us to be able to send our vendors, our, those members, to the, through this program and let NOAC go through the process. And then you can, in good faith, go to your members and say, you have every opportunity for us to endorse you. Go through that program because that means that if you went through that program, you made the commitment, they've done the due diligence, and I can go in good faith to all our members to say it's a strong program. So that's what we created over the last six, eight months. It's actually online right now. The guidelines are very clear. Uh, we have three companies actually that have gone through the process. One was a well, one's gone through and two are. Yeah, one went through the process and two are currently going through the process right now. And I, I tell you, and they'll tell you that, <laughs> you know, it wasn't easy, but it's worth it. It's worth it end. So that's from their standpoint. Now, what do we have to do? Why was this created for us? Because now, as a chamber, you're going to have a whole list of qualified companies in different industries that you can go and provide additional benefits to your members. So if you have that company out there that has 200 employees, or 300 employees and go, ah, I never get anything out of the chamber. I don't need, um, you know, I'm self-insured. I don't need health care through this. Or I'm, I, I get my own office supplies. We got our own direct contract. I don't need these different things. But man, boy, what if we had a wireless program, cell phone program? Because we don't have that because we're not big enough to negotiate our own. But what if NOAC had one through the approved vendor program? Now you can go into that approved vendor program and you can offer them that same opportunity to save money and every one of the chambers will be able to do, it, do that through their members. That, that's what that program is designed for, for you to sit down and be able to go through a checklist of um, options that you can offer to your members uh, to help them save money. So how does it sound so far? I know we don't have it up there, et cetera, but is it something that you think you or your members would find value in? Tell us if it's not. That's okay. That's okay because we still. Say, yeah, go ahead. I would say as long as that program reaches out uh, into the uh, geographic margins, I be tipped. Yes. Right? That, you know, that has to be of benefit to me. Yep. Very, very good point. I wish we had the guidelines too because part of the requirement is the geographical footprint of that company, their service has to mirror NOAC across the region, northern Ohio. So it's unbelievable. That's one of the criteria we have. 
The other part is they have to be a member of a chamber of commerce, of course. And there's other parts and pieces of it too, including, um, you know, they have to have domicile, a physical location in this area, one of our chamber areas too. So that could be a rep or somebody there. So it's not a virtual type business. They have to have feet in the street to services. In the so when you call, they got to get there <laughs> if you need to call. All right. I would encourage all of you to go to the website at some point, you know, this weekend or next week when you have an opportunity. Take a look. The vendor program guidelines are very clear. You can look through it. And the next time you go back to your offices and that, that, that member comes up to you and says, I would love to get endorsed for you, by you, et cetera, absolutely. Go, go to the NOAC website. And if you get through that process, we'll gladly take a look at uh, passing along this to our, our members in terms of endorsement. Okay, that's exactly where our chamber went to. Our board agreed to it not long ago, and we're only endorsing NOAC vendors, period, as a chamber. And it's easy. It makes my discussions easier, quite frankly, because it's hard to tell a member, no, we don't want to. So, all right, the other thing is, join your chamber, join your local chamber campaign, uh, where we spent, and every time I mention these numbers, I think Vicky just cringes, but we spent well over $20,000, too, in the market to, uh, to promote why you should join your local chamber of commerce. And actually, um, there were a lot of folks who took advantage. How many, how many new members in total do you recall us getting or submitted to us? Because by now you should have submitted the new members that you had back to NOAC so you can get your, the books and referral fees. Do you, well, you know the we, total number? We have, certificates, yeah. we have certificates to hand out okay. for referred members right. of around, it was right around 60, 65. But how many are on the Margie? I'm looking at Margie if, if she finished the list because all the members that you know came through, it was over a hundred, over 150. 135. Remember? Wow. So 135. <laughs> she knew. Yeah. So 135. Now I still have a feeling that there's some chambers that have not submitted their their. I have a feeling that some chambers have not submitted their uh, information to us. But if they took advantage of the campaign, because a lot of times you might have gotten a referral and you didn't even know where it was coming from because it came off of this website and off the $20,000 um, um, campaign that we put together with database and all that. We wanted to do a little bit more, but sometimes you run out of money. <laughs> 20000 doesn't buy you a lot in the media. But um, and we're going to keep this going, though, because we're going to have that landing page still there. That you might we, we might create more incentives as we go along. So um, it we have money for the chambers to hand out today. Good. I thought that'd be nice. OK. Chambers love receiving money, too. So it's uh, but 135 new members added to chambers of commerce in a 90 day period from one initiative. That's what we're trying to do. Take advantage of it. Uh, I know we added, I think, 14 or yeah. 16 new members. Uh, you know, we actually tied it into our own. We went to our membership committee and said, we have this campaign. Let's run a campaign within the campaign. So try to take advantage of the money that NOAC's spending at your own chambers and, uh, you know, drive it. So today well, we we're passing yeah. out. Yep. And also, um, and all that ad and all the information is still available uh, online. Um, so it's generic. You can always use this ad. It, the ad looks like the um, poster that's on the back table there. The, with the, it, it looks like our website. It has a young lady at the top. Uh, we're creating, in fact, I was hoping to have a sign here today, but uh, you can always use that anytime. It's very generic. Just join your chamber of commerce because it, you know, it mentions the anthem and mentions networking and it mentions uh, the value that you get out of your chamber. So with that, how about if we bring some people down for some money? Rose Pasternak from Chesterland Chamber, here's your money. <laughs> <laughs> Briefly, let me show you. We also, we created certificates. We're sending the certificates to the chamber so they can actually hand it out to their members and there's no money exchanged in here because we're going to pay you right now. See? <laughs> Look at that. That's the way you do business. <laughs> so um, basically you use those certificates as we told you before. Um, your member gets to use that at one of your events or what, however you want to use it. It's up to you because you already got the money. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Patty Ryan from the Lakewood Chamber. Come on down and get your money. I think you had four members, so um, we've got your check in here. Again, your certificates. Yeah, referrals. these were for the referrals. referrals. Yes. How many members? members? 13 members. Good, Good for you. Uh, and all of those members are going to be receiving the Marketing um, Without Money book and the uh, half month, half year subscription to um, CBC Magazine. Um, hey, hey, hey. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, I, and I know I did it with the Aurora Chamber, and they, they actually did a membership campaign right at their luncheon that day, and then I was there. So they must have gotten like eight members just from that particular luncheon. It was really huge. Uh, the next one is Middlefield Chamber. Is Nick here from Middlefield? Okay. He first it was one. Well, we'll have to send it to them. We're we're going to send it to any chamber that's not here. Uh, John Sobolewski, North Coast Chamber. What did you end up with? Well, this is just three from the one chamber from North Coast. Thank you. You're welcome. Although I think TJ and see one of his members actually earned two twenty-five dollar gift certificates because he had referred more than one member. A couple chambers had people like that. You know they're active people, but we're you got the money. It's right in there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Dale Knoll, North Ridgeville Chamber. Hey, Dale, come on down. Get your money. Dale, you have quite a few in here. Um, you have, well, there's five. Hey, oh, congratulations. How many members did you get totally? I think eight. Eight? eight well, that's nine. great. Yeah. Hey, some, and for some chambers, they don't get eight in a whole year. So, you know. And the biggest one, I saved it for last, I guess, uh, Beachwood Chamber of Commerce. Hey, Wayne, Thank here's you. your money. <laughs> we, um, and, and keep in mind, what, we, what, we, what we've done is, we paid you up front, as Vicki said, and now you can do what you like. I mean, what, go back to the folks who gave the referral and give them this. Now, what we're going to do to make it easy, because we try to make it as easy as possible, we're just going to invite them to a luncheon and say it's on us, because that's the cost of our luncheon anyway. So, hey, thanks for bringing in the, the member, you know, come to our luncheon, and then we'll recognize them there, give them a certificate, and they get a free lunch. So, once again, try to make it easy to execute. You can do something like that, invite them to an event, or you could, whatever you like, but we're trying to make it easy. So, once again, you're gonna start, you're, you're gonna hear more and more, and we're gonna come up with just, hopefully, creative ideas to uh, help you drive membership into your chamber and, and help drive more dollars into your chamber as well. Um, we also have, we also have extra copies of CBC Magazine, which was a strong partner of ours for this for this particular program, and uh, we encourage you to take those with you. All right. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to spend the end of the meeting talking about or having oh roadshow. We got to talk about the roadshow very quickly. Roadshow. All right. What we like to do is this. Once again, as Patty mentioned, I had an opportunity to go out to her chamber and talk. And we had a lot of things. We want to have a fun event. We want to, and we don't know if we're going to get an actual big bus like John Madden and have it go out on the road, but we want to go on the road to various locations throughout northern Ohio and really um, talk about why members should take advantage of NOAC programs and why companies sh should join their local chamber of commerce. And we actually have a marketing company who's helping us put this together so that we could do it in a fun way. We need your help, we need your ideas, and we need you to volunteer in your area if you can. So help us put this together. So we would drive and come to your area, and you could turn it into an event. So if you have four or five chambers in an area like we do, we could turn it into one big event in which we invite all of our members here, have them bring a buddy, and we can do a lot of fun things. We're gonna do a cookout, all those things, all through NOAC to help you drive membership into your chamber. So uh, we're going to be soliciting ideas from you. If you have any, we got. I know we have some very creative people here because chamber people are creative. We <laughs> we try to uh, figure out different ways to add value every day. So um, if you have any ideas, please share them with us, and we're going to be putting this together because we like to be on the road as early as mid-May. So we're going to put this together very quickly, <laughs> but it might not be till June. <laughs> Because we're going to have, I think, four four locations, right, in the region we're going to try to hit well, close that, to that. Well, right. that's what we were thinking of, but okay. it could change if we had more opportunities and more people wanted to be involved. Yeah. So if you want to be involved and you'd like us to come out and you'd like to have a big, fun party with your members, take advantage of it. We're putting these things out there. Just take advantage of it. All right? Um, okay. Last thing we want to do is we're going to have chamber idea sharing. I'm going to have Vicki talk to you about what that is. He did such a great job last year. I thought he would do it. Uh, no. Actually, um, I was out surfing the web the other day and looking for ideas to market your, your chamber and nonprofit organizations. I don't know how many seminars you've been to, but I've been to a ton of them. And yet, we come home with a lot of ideas. I go to CCEO. I, I share ideas with other chambers. And yet, you come home, and sometimes you just don't do some of those things that you know you should do. Time runs out. So when I went searching, I found this great list. And I have to apologize to them ahead of time. I called them, but they haven't called me back. The Ashland Chamber of Commerce had a great little list 
on, and it's in your packet. I don't, I've lost mine now. But it's 100 mark, quick marketing tips. Oh, thanks. It looks like this. And I started looking through this, and I thought, oh, my gosh. How many chambers have not applied these kind of techniques to their own business of being a chamber? Um, so I, anyway, I called the Ashland Chamber to ask them if it was OK if I shared it with them. I thought, well, it's online. They haven't called me back. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to be okay with you guys having it. I still want to get their permission to share. So that, <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll get your card, Eric, just in case. Yeah, we'll get Eric's card. <laughs> well, it's on the web. I mean, they must want people to know about it. And then I told them I was going to, I left a message, told them I was going to give them credit for it. But it really is a generic list. If I took their name off of it, I could have pretended I did it, but I, I wouldn't, didn't want to do that. Um, it's just a good list, and I think you should start with this idea, but what we really want to do today is you all have ideas. I know lots of people do expos. I know lots of people do um, you know, golf outings. Those things all do market your chamber, but sometimes it's those little ideas, even as we've gotten into social media concepts these days, something you've done recently or would like to do and want to get input from, I'd like you to have like a 10 minute discussion right now. We, last year everybody said that that was the best part of the meeting was the, the 10 minutes we gave them at the end to share ideas. And then at the end I want the best ideas to be um, brought forward and, and have a little brief discussion about it because I bet you anything you're doing something out there in your chamber that maybe nobody's even ever thought about doing and I'd like to have you discuss that. And you can work off of this list or take it home because as I went through this list I, I noticed there were several things that I bet you chambers don't do that. I mean even little things like I don't know add landscaping to your storefront. I mean, all chambers look good, but just you know, pick something on here and see if you can take advantage of that in your own um, chamber environment. But use that list, but take the next 10 minutes and just talk about your wildest, craziest ideas that you either had already or are, would like to, to do, and then we want you to share them afterwards. We're right on time, too. And we're on time. Now, if you're sitting with folks that you normally communicate with, yeah, move around. Get up and get go to another one because this is a chance to really get ideas from folks that you have not had an opportunity to communicate with and just share ideas. So uh, we got about 10 minutes and we're right on time now, and we'll give you a two-minute warning when we're just about there. Pick a secretary. There's pads on the. With that said, why don't we uh, start right here at the table? I was at? Anybody just kind of want to throw? Up? Go ahead. All right. Say who you are. Hi, Angie Bowman, High Till Press Regional Chamber. Um, we have a lot of great um, ideas. Gabe from the uh, Garfield Chamber is bringing After Hours Mixers back to her chamber and she's charging for them, but the money's going to go to a charitable effort and a local charitable um, event. Uh, Wayne and I shared some ideas about um, how we do our all networking breakfasts. And then um, the one idea that I'm, I've been finding really effective for bringing new members in in my chamber, um, we have a breakfast series. And at the end of the breakfast uh, for that day, we offer people the opportunity to stay for a 10 minute maximize your membership session with um, somebody from our membership committee. And they talk about all of the things every single month that we, we offer. There's, we do it in three categories, uh, networking and marketing, um, the benefits they get. So every single month people hear about Anthem and Benefits One and FedEx and Independence Business Supply. Um, and then we, what did I say, networking and, oh, and professional development, our programming that we offer. And um, we have members joining every single month as a result of that. So. Can I give her a testimonial? I was at hers and I couldn't believe those people who couldn't get the applications fast enough because they could see the value. I mean, that was a yeah. great, great program. It's all about the ROI. Yeah. Okay. Your table, will you? Sure, okay. Mary Jo. Oh, I'm sorry. Mary Jo. Mary Jo, the Ottawa Area Chamber. Um, Dale here has had, or Judy first, um, she talked about that they had put on a mayoral debate and uh, invited the council candidates and, and uh, they brought in 250 people. She had her table in the middle of the room and she said, well, how many, a lot of people picked up applications and it was invited, the public was invited, I assume. Totally. And uh, so they had a good crowd come in for this. And, they sent out a lot of applications with those and brought in that about eight new members that day. Uh, they're also putting on a cornhole contest. And kind of a fun thing. And it's ludicrous, but it brings in people. And it gets their name out. Uh, Dale put on a Disney Institute, uh, and that did very well for them. And, and uh, they're still 
interested in that one. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, she talks about the City Magazine that they send out about every 18 months that they're uh, that talks about the village and the chamber. I mean, the chamber just putting this out. It's sent out to all the businesses and residents in the area. So, um, at our chamber, uh, we have a spotlight on business. Uh, our local radio station uh, allows us to do a one-minute spotlight uh, for a member one time. One, one time, they do it for a full week. They're on every several times during the day, actually, uh, for a week. And it's a nice little thing for new members coming in and. Old members that we've gotten, um, but they lost. They, they, the radio station can then do advertising from there, but uh, with them. But uh, that's very popular. I also send out a weekly member-to-member -member email that I get. Uh, well, I mean, it can have what can it have on it, Vicky? I mean, it's got my benefits listed oh, always, yeah. and anything new going on there, and uh, all member You're news. You're my email and queen. You do so many emails. It's I'm great. kind of a crazy email person. So that's. Kind of what we've got going on. Ladies in business, I started that up, and we're also sponsoring a uh, market, uh, farmers market in Ottawa. So we've never had one, and it's right downtown. And uh, I mean, it gets like you talk about buzz about your name, and that uh, we're getting our name out there a lot. We're doing that kind of thing. Great. Thank you for sharing. We'll go to the back table. Um, anyone at the back table like to share one or two ideas? Yeah. All right. Rose? I'm nominated, I guess. Um, Rose Pasternak from the Chesterland Chamber. We had the first uh, item we had was actually come, came from a southern chamber, and Laura brought it. And she said that at one of the events that they, or at all their events, they bring a cardboard cutout of a man, and they call him Chamber Chuck. And each time he's at an event, he's got a different sign on and says, "Ask me about Anthem." And the next time, it might say, "Ask me about kind of business life." So, and, it, and it, he's become the highlight of these their chamber events because where, where's Chuck? Where's you know they want to know where Chamber Chuck is? So I thought that was a great idea. Oh yeah, and had their meetings. Yeah, Chuck will have a minute to talk today to you about this, and so they get up and Chuck will give us a little speech. Um, and then Sheila was talking at her chamber that she puts out on their hanging sign by the street, which gets a lot of traffic, a member of the week, and it highlights one of their members. And their local newspaper also um, puts that on their um, masthead every week, too, for them, too. So that's a great idea, too. It just gives uh, some publicity to their membership. And in our chamber, we do an annual uh, Welcome New Member Night, where we invite all the new members for that year to come to an after-hours event for uh, at one of our local restaurants. And we have it out on the patio. And it's a, a whopping $5 charge for any one of our members who want to come. The new members are comped. And there's networking that goes on. We make them introduce each other, you know, themselves and tell us a little bit about each other. And it's just a great way that the members seem to like it, the new members seem to like it because they put a face to a name. And it's just uh, a great way to see those new people that you've solicited or met during the year. So that was our table. Good, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Center table here? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Especially that group. Someone should definitely stand up. <laughs> we're not fighting each other who will stand up. <laughs> Sippin has a farmer's market uh, similar to Ottawa. It's new for them and it's been very su successful. Um, and um, is it Broadview Heights? Broadview Heights says that Think Local campaign, this is a really good idea, where she has a directory that she posts out. It goes out, they send flyers out to like 8,000 people, um, promotes like buying local, um, and it promotes chamber members because they're free in the directory and there's a fee for non-chamber members. It's actually driven her membership because people want to join for that reason. And uh, there's also uh, like a buying contest where residents can go out and get several, I don't know, how many did you say, how many stores do they have to go to? Um, I can't remember how many stores, but. You know, get like, you know, check it out for a hundred. Thing, and then oh. they can come by the chamber uh, office and enter their completed form at, for a drawing for an iPad. And it's been very successful. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Fort Clinton did the wishing well, right? You guys read the wishing well? Um, and it is uh, kind of in uh, conjunction with their Main Street program downtown and that's uh, similar where you uh, have to spend five dollars and this kind of ties in how much you have to spend at that location. I just drop in and get your, your thing. You have to spend five dollars in different uh, locations over a period of time and then you brought your completed 
punch card into the chamber and you were given a chamber gift certificate and they had a sponsor um, underwrite the cost of it and so they were able to cover the cost of all those um, um, gift certificates again it promotes uh, buying local and for them they do it at Christmas time because they're a tourist community and kind of offsets um, the slower months um, let's see um, oh uh, the Lakewood Chamber, we do um, a buy local online auction, and um, we um, uh, we call it R and D uh, rip off and duplicate from Future Heights. Did one on the east side. Ours is much smaller, but it works for us because we try to we were trying to find something and avoiding an event and the time consumption and the spending of the money of an event. So this is online, and basically. Um, we go to a company called Bidding for Good that hosts nonprofit uh, auction sites at a low cost and it's kind of all-inclusive. Um, somebody has to donate an item of $25 or more and they get listed on the auction site with a link to their website with their logo. And uh, it is publicized on the radio and, and local newspapers, uh, you know, flyers go out and everybody's encouraged to stay home, click here to buy local. And we run it from at the middle of November to the first week in December, and that allows us to kind of tie in the holidays with that and get everything, if we have physical goods, shipped out to everybody in time for the holidays. And uh, the first year, we, we've only done it two years. The first year, we, did it, we made about $2,500, with really, again, the amount of time compared to events, pretty low, and last year, we made 7000 So we kind of think it's going to continue to grow. First year, we had like 50 items on our auction site. Last year, we had 150 So. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. I am uh, Jim Chalemi. I'm with the West Shore Chamber of Commerce. Uh, John Sobolewski, our executive director. We are actually part of uh, four chambers because of him. And uh, this is actually his brainchild, and it's, it's brilliant. It's called Power of More. And with that, uh, throughout the four chambers, we uh, are going to give away a car lease for three years. Uh, the sponsorship of that is picked up by uh, four of our local members, um, rather large members at, at, at that. But the idea is that with every time that you come to a chamber event, be it a business after hours, be it a luncheon, be it a breakfast or a networking event, you will come at that point have the opportunity to fill out a certificate of uh, registration, name, address, etc., that will say you're there. And then at the end of the year, we're going to have a drawing and uh, pick one name to find out who gets that lease for that three-year period. That's first price. That's got to, the value of that has to be somewhere between seven and ten thousand dollars at a minimum. Uh, second place is a uh, fifty-inch black and white TV. Black and white. Black and white. <laughs> 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 That's it. Right. Yeah. 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 Third place. Uh, third place is an iPad. So we held our first event for this. Uh, two nights ago over at Fame State Barbecue North Homestead with Famous Ashley. And I think we had about 150 people, 150 people there for that. And I can only envision, and again, this is brand new to us, that over the coming months, this has to grow. And that last month is going to be a barnstorm. So uh, that was John's uh, idea. That was nice, John. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And Akron Boards of Trades, you guys. You have anything? I saw you at the other tables too. Yeah, we, uh, the, Jim Docks with the Akron Boards of Trade, we're always trying to get new members and we're always struggling it, and like everyone else. We uh, are establishing a Facebook presence, which is long overdue. But one of the things we're also doing to be a little bit more fun, have some uh, uh, social networking and, and, and attracting new members, is we're having a scavenger hunt. It's, not, it's a treasure hunt. Uh, there's a series of lakes around the southern southern end of Akron uh, called the Portage Lakes, and we're going to have basically a series of pontoon boats just running all over the lake looking for things. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then finally, uh, some of you may or may not know, Akron is the home to the great event of the All-American Soapbox Derby. Uh, a lot of people have on their bucket list to go down Derby Downs, and we have a battle of our boards, which we have bring all the boards together, 60, 70 people, and you know, big Big guys in these little cars. <laughs> and that actually last year's champion was sure. So it's a lot of fun. Good. Thanks, Jim. 
Well, I'm going to conclude my portion. We're going to wrap it up. I just want to take this opportunity to um, Margie, can you please stand up? Vicki, can you please stand up? Thank you very much. You guys do a terrific job for us. Absolutely. They work very hard, and I know we drive them nuts at times, so I'll say that up front. Pam, thank you very much for putting this together. We appreciate it. But more importantly, i got to thank all of you because it's, it's your ideas and your input that helps us when we come to meetings to talk about you know, how we're going to take this organization forward and what we're going to look like a year from now. So uh, it allows us to sit down with our vendor partners who, quite frankly, we couldn't do it without you. You know that. And it's up to us to demonstrate to them how important they are to our organization. So thank all of you for joining us as well, too. That concludes the semi-annual meeting.